All right, in this video, we're actually gonna be using our color sensor to detect reflected light in order to actually trace a black line. So we're gonna have a robot sort of drive over a black line and follow it. Now, in order to do that, we need to be scanning the floor and the black line and detecting the change in color or the change in reflected light, I should say. And the robot's just going to essentially steer itself left and right, kind of wiggling back and forth along that line in order to sort of stay centered over that. Now, what we first need is a loop. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our loop function from our yellow block category. And for now, let's just leave that turned on for an unlimited amount of time. And then we need to grab a switch. Now, a switch lets you have a function happen if something is happening and if it's not happening. So say, for example, we were driving over the black line and if we were not driving over the black line. So we need to select our ambient light sensor, or I'm sorry, a reflected light sensor here from the color sensor. So let's click on our sensors, go to the color sensor, comparison, reflected light intensity, and you need to know what your threshold is. So what's the value of when you're not on the black line, so when you're on the floor, and when you are. So let's go to our hardware window down here, when we're plugged in via USB. And let's make sure that we're measuring the correct thing. So reflected light intensity. So right now I am in fact over the black line with my robot. And if I move it over the floor, that spikes up to 52 or so. So I have a change from about 10 to 52. So I would call somewhere in the middle uh, 20 ish, you know, depending on how accurate your threshold is, the smoother the line trace you might have. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna say my buffer is gonna be anything less than 20 meaning that I am over the black line. Any, any value less than 20 means I must be tracing over the black line. Anything over 20, I'm not. So that's what these boxes up here do, the check and the X. The check means that this condition is happening. So the check would be the values reading less than 20. So you are in fact driving on the black line. This X would be that this is not happening. So the values reading more than 20. So you're driving on the floor. Now let's go back to the check. And we need to grab our single large motor block. We actually need to control our motors individually for this. So we're going to grab the motor block. Should already be set to B. And we're going to set the condition or the mode to be on, on forever, just on. And set your power down to about 15 to get yourself started. If you go too fast, the robot's actually going to drive over the line. So again, I would start slow. Um, and having the right threshold value and the right speed is really what gives you the smoothest possible line trace. Then we're going to grab another single motor control block. Put that right next to the one we just had. This one we're going to select port C. And we're going to turn it off. So B will be on at 15 power. C will be off. Okay. Okay. Now, that's what we're going to be doing when we are on the black line. Let's talk about what we're doing when we're not on the black line. Essentially, we need to turn the opposite direction to pull us back towards it. So I just clicked on this X here to go to the not condition of this. And we're going to make the exact opposite. So let's grab a large motor block. It's going to be for port B, and it's going to be turned off. And let's grab another large motor block. for port C and let's set it to be on at 15% power. Okay. Now, as long as your values are right, your robot should essentially wiggle back and forth over the line, uh, driving along and tracing the line for an unlimited amount. And once the line runs out, it should turn around in a circle until it finds the line again. You can edit these parameters, so you can edit your threshold to get a more accurate reading. You could change your speeds to make it trace a little bit faster. And you can change your loop here. So maybe you don't want it on for an unlimited amount of time. Maybe you want it on for a certain time delay or for a certain set number of, say, motor rotations. Um, just be certain if you say, for example, set your motor rotations, you are setting them for a motor that is actually active. So we only have B and C turned on. So of course you would need to choose either B and C for that function to work.